This is my childhood memories of India. Lush green forests, pristine waterways, and the sweet smell of fresh air. I'm afraid that this might not be the case for my children. All they'll experience is dry riverbeds, polluted waterways, and dirty beaches. Unfortunately, this will be my children's memory of India. This is sad, real sad. So I had to do something. I wanted to find out why this was happening. Today, I wanted to share with you a personal journey which transformed my entire life. It all started with that shirt I bought a year ago. It was on sale and it was irresistibly cheap. My curious self wanted to find out why it was on sale and how brands can afford to sell it at that low price. What I discovered shook me to the core. I learned that cheap always comes at a high cost. I also learned the cheap shirt cost 20% of the water pollution globally. In places like India, Bangladesh and Pakistan, it's even higher where entire water sources have become unusable by the local population. The World Bank calls this the invisible crisis. Apart from pollution, entire water resources are being depleted. As you can see, the Aral Sea has completely disappeared. Not just water resources, entire forests are being destroyed to make way for industrial agriculture. So where is it all going wrong? In the past, I remember, in fashion, there used to be four seasons. But now, we have 52 micro-seasons. 52! That's literally every week of the year. New clothes are launched into the market for each of the micro-seasons. In the US, it went from 20 garments per person per year to 68 garments per person per year in the space of just three years. 40% of everything which is produced goes to the secondary market and some of them don't even see the daylight. The problem is we produce way too many clothes. I didn't stop there. I dug deeper. Here's what I discovered. It takes about 700 gallons of water to produce one cotton shirt. And it takes about 2,000 gallons of water to produce a pair of jeans. That's more than enough for one person to drink eight cups of di a day for 10 years. 10 years. So every time I buy a pair of jeans, I'm reminded of the fact that I'm depriving someone eight cups of water a day for a decade. To make matters worse, brands like Burberry destroy $36 million worth of merchandise. H&M, burnt 60 tons of clothes. Louis Vuitton, Nike, Michael Kors, Victoria's Secret, JCPenney, and the list goes on. Not only have we destroyed our natural resources, but we are polluting the environment even further by either dumping them or burning them. So the question is, what is the real cost of the cheap shirt that I bought? Well, it's not too late. We have taken actions before, at a global scale, to help our planet heal. At the turn of the millennium, we agreed to cut out CFC, which already is making an impact. Thanks to our efforts, the ozone layer will be back to normal by 2050. The damage was quick, but the healing process takes a long time. A generation, in fact. If we start now, we can reverse the damage we caused but we have to do it one small step at a time. I'm not suggesting that we should forget about fashion and go back to wearing leaves or become clones. All I'm saying is we have to be very, very conscious and conservative about what we consume. So where do we start? The solution has three parts. First of all, understand the need not our want. Second, visualizing our impact on our planet. Every action we take has an impact and we need to visualize it 
collectively, both positive and negative impacts. Third, practicing sustainability everywhere. Let's start with the most important thing, need prediction. Currently, retailers are working on demand prediction and therefore producing more than what is needed. And then to shift the products, they are creating artificial demand. It should never be demand prediction. It must be need prediction. This is where artificial intelligence can help. AI is a technology which can help us understand what we really need so that we produce only what we need. To calculate the real need, we need to understand someone's preferences. Visual AI technology can understand the colors you prefer, the designs you like, and even the fit which suits you best. It can also understand your style, your persona, your fashion sense based on your day-to-day -day photographs. This could be done using the photos you already have on social media or even in private albums. So there's minimal effort from you to provide that required data. Based on your lifestyle and past purchases, AI can also predict an individual's needs. AI can predict even my personal needs for the entire year. For example, it predicts that Raj will need five shirts, three trousers, two shoes, and one jacket in blue. Now that we have the individual's data, we can start predicting the needs for a family, a village, a county, and eventually the entire nation. All of this data will be completely anonymized to protect our privacy. And then it can be shared with the vendors, manufacturers, distributors, and all the agents who are involved in the supply chain. If the requirement is 10 garments per person per year for a nation of 66 million people, we only need 660 million garments and not the 6 billion garments that are currently being produced annually. It's a collective responsibility of the governments, retailers, and consumers to make sure we're only producing what we need. Now that we have the needs prediction sorted, let's move on to step number two. To visualize our impact, our every action has both positive and negative impacts. We are most likely to make the right choices when we are able to visualize our collective actions. But it's not that simple. We need to change our lifestyle. We need information to make an informed decision. That's our next step, making informed choices and practicing sustainability. To make a choice, we need information. Let's take a leaf out of the food industry. The food industry has made huge strides in helping us make healthier choices. We need a similar approach for the fashion industry where we can understand what we're about to buy and where, whether it's a good, bad, or ugly choice. For this system to work, we need to track every component that's involved in the making of the clothes. This information also needs to be available to everyone, an immutable source of information which we can all rely on, knowing that no one in the supply chain has suppressed or hidden any facts. This is where technologies like blockchain can help. It will help us track everything back to the source, including distance traveled by the raw materials, resources utilized, and how sustainably these materials are produced. We need a traffic light system, which will help us make us informed decisions. Green being locally sourced and carbon neutral, red being the worst. So imagine this, next time when you say, hey Alexa, buy me a blue shirt, Alexa comes back and asking you, sure, which blue shirt would you like? 
the green, yellow or red option. I know which one I'll be going for. When we make informed choices, practice sustainability, produce only what we need, beautiful things start happening. We become self-sufficient. Production and manufacturing becomes local, regional. This will encourage microeconomies, job opportunities, even for all the people who lost their jobs when the high streets closed. It's a win-win. Now, let's go back to the original question. Can AI save our planet? The real question is, do you want to save our planet?